you are a subscriber to this channel, you probably watch my breakdown for Under Your Skin Bow, right? And I went over what role I wanted and particularly why. But now I kind of want to go a little bit more in depth, especially with people being scared that Arbalist is now 25% a week against champions. But don't forget, Arbalist also has Disruption Break on there, right? So if you think about it, Arbalist is still going to be doing a lot of damage because when you break a shield, it's good, that enemy is going to be counting at uh, the anti barrier is going to be counting for this weapon itself, right? So if anything, think about Disruption Break losing 25%. But the weapon is still going to be very strong. Um, now, that being said, when it comes to the choice of options for what we have for this season, we have bow and um, scout rifles for NT barrier. A lot of them aren't consistent, which is why a lot of us use Arbalus. Um, but adaptive munition is one of those perks that may come into play, right? You may not want to use Arbalus all the time. Another neat thing, too, is that there's only a few set of weapons in the game that you might want to chase after. All right now if we're talking about the anti-barrier for example right if i'm looking at display here there's only two weapons that have adaptive munitions on it when it comes to anti-barrier and that's going to be under your skin and point of inquiry all right now these are two different weapons you do need to get the red border for these weapons in order to craft them okay i will be making a revised got a uh, video for the point of inquiry, but I just wanted to go over this. You might have seen me playing Iron Banner trying to get a crisis inverted hand cannon as well, right? The neat thing about this perk that uh, a lot of people don't understand is it allows you to go into a matchman activity where you can break any shield, and that's kind of what Arbalist does, but now you can have it on legendary weapons. Now, if you don't know how the stacks work, we can go over that real quick, and in no way do you need to have the enhanced version. The enhanced version is really nice, but I do want to point this out in this video, all right? So if we're looking at the perk itself, when you hit a non-matching shield, damage ramps up to 500% against the shield, right? Auto rifles and pulse rifles have 33.3 per, per stack, but that's because these are big ammo putting a lot of shots on the target, right? Bows, hand cannons, and scout rifles are kind of like singular. You kind of like, you know, pace yourself, right? So you have here 166 per stack. And then you have linear fusion rifles, right? There's the raid linear fusion rifle that actually has adapters on it. And I will be making a guide for that soon as well. I, there's a few different roles in that gun that I'm looking for. If you end up going and crafting these two, since they could get enhanced, um, auto rifles and pulse get 40, bows, hand cannons, and scout rifles get 200, right? So that means about two stacks and probably break any shield. Is it needed? No. Is it nice to have? Sure, right? So if you're out there and you've been playing Crucible for a bit, if you do end up with a Crisis Inverter that has Armor Pierce and Adaptive Munition, you should keep it. Here's a few reasons why. This season, hand cannons are unstoppable. You can use it in endgame. That means that you can cover all shields. You don't need to run Arbalist. You can run whatever you like. Armor Piercing does stack on top of the Adaptive Munitions because Armor Piercing against any shields gets that 5% extra buff. One neat thing to pay attention to as well is that in the near future, we're probably going to have hand cannon as anti-barrier. So now you have something that can basically do what Arbalist's job is currently. All right. Now in this system, uh, I don't know what Bungie did to scout rifles, but most scout rifles don't do much damage against like barrier shields. You used to be able to three to four tap shields, and now if you don't have a hung jury with the big ones and explosive round, it takes forever. But adapt ammunition is one of those perks that kind of comes into play. I crafted. This gun, I don't know if it even tells me the date that it's been crafted, right? So on 3-23-2022, I crafted this gun, and I left it here. Because I was like, this might come into play in certain instances, right? And yesterday, Snurb was like, I was using this gun, and it was one-shotting stuff, one shot and shield. But the thing was, he wasn't consistently one shot and shield. He was getting the perk to proc up and get it to high stack, where when he broke one shield, he was able to break another. He kind of he didn't give me that step. But... Snurve did bring this back up to my attention before, you know, I kind of got like what I wanted to have to make this video. If you're out there and you don't want to use Arbalist and you have a point of inquiry that you can craft, you don't have to kind of keep this on there. This is what I kept. But Genesis is a great perk that goes together with adaptive munitions. If you also watch my uh, coming to pass video, right, 
That was another thing that I kind of put together there, Genesis and the Dab Munitions. If you're going to be breaking the shield, right, you're breaking the combatant shield, you're going to have, you're going to be filling up your weapon from reserves. If you do this to anti-barrier shield, you're going to be filling up your weapon from reserve. Now, if you match the damage type to it, it's going to generate ammo. That means that, like, you're not going to lose ammo. You basically have ammo the whole time. So having these two together is actually pretty nice. If we're looking at Gunsmith here, right, this is not... This is not fully done yet. So I want to show you exactly what I am going to turn this gun into. All right. It's going to have armor piercing. Remember what I said about armor piercing stacking with adaptive munitions. You had those two together. Now, if you could get the enhanced version of this, right, you're going to get that 200% per stack. That means that you're guaranteeing two shotting all the time. And if you have multiple anti barriers in the room or if you have shields in the room, you can make it to one shot. Another neat thing here is psycho hack. Subsane damage from this weapon lowers the target damage output for a short time. That means that that anti-barrier is not going to be putting out that much damage, especially if you're hitting the anti-barrier sniper. This will help you live, right? You, you break them, they snipe you, and you know that they're going to be doing less damage. Now, depending on your resilience, you still might die. That is up to you. Now, when it comes to the mag, this part is literally anything that you like to use, Okay. This is up on you. It depends on your input. For most folks, I would say maybe st stability and handling if you're on, you know, controller. For me, Hammer Forge is completely fine. Or something that just gives me a bunch of handling, right? You do have stability and range. You have stability. You have range. You have minus uh, stability, some range, and no handling, right? So maybe you're having trouble with record direction, Maybe you want stability, range, and handling. All of this is up to you, all right? The main factor is to have armor piercing, genesis, and adaptive munitions, okay? Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to demonstrate this in action. And the neat thing, too, is I also want to say under your skin felt underwhelming because it does more damage per shot to the barrier shield, right, in a GM. But it, it takes two shots to break. The scout rifle does less damage, but also takes two shots to break. All right? So that means that adaptive munition doesn't really scale on the damage of the weapon. It just scales on how many times it hits the target. Okay? If you don't know what that means, is it means the damage numbers don't mean anything. The number of hits on the actual target does. All right? Because I came in here and I tested this with the Archer Temple adaptive munition. And you would think, in bungee logic, the more damage something does, the faster it was going to be. When I crafted this, I thought it was going to take me one shot to break everything, not two, even though the bow does more damage per shot than the scout rifle. All right? So when I'm in here. I'm in the uh, Grandmaster uh, Glassway currently, right? I have a barrier here, all right? And if I time this, you're going to see that it's going to take me three shots. But with these three shots, I basically have adaptive munitions up. Now he's probably gonna shoot me or something. And then I get to do, you know, I get to pull up on him. In most instances, if you're able to hit him up right away, you can get two shots off, as you can see here. So all I did was I used my adaptive munition shot on this guy. And the next time he uh, puts up a shield, I get to two shot it. So if you're out there, you're like, I don't need Arbalist, but I want something that can cover shields, and I want something that can break anti barriers really quick. This is going to be the play for you. Remember, Adaptive Munitions works on any shield. So if you go into a match game activity, you're still going to have this up. And the worst come to worst is you're going to be using three. All right? So if you're out there and you think this perk is not good enough, I think you should relook the perk. So for this weapon here, right, I went and I got it completed. All you need to do is get it to level nine. So if you get this to level nine, you can then unlock most things that you need, right? So armor piercing was one of the things that I wanted. I went with enhanced Genesis and adaptive munitions. With that being said, adaptive now goes up to 200 per stack, which allows you to consistently two shot instead of three shot with what we had before. Now, the cool thing here is all you need is Major Spec because Major Spec is also extra damage against powerful combatants and champions go in that range for as well. All right. So now when we come back here, you see me use the gun without some of the perks. Now we'll kind of 
you know, do the same thing here again. Um, there's, an, there's a very consistent thing in the game right now, though. Because adaptive munition stacks, right? But it doesn't show up on your screen because Bungie doesn't have... I don't know why we don't have a UI for it. And as you can see, that I didn't even hit a crit. I hit a body. But there's no UI for it. So you have the perk up and you have the stack, but you can't see it. So there's going to be random times where this guy basically gets one shot by the, the scout, right, for the shield. Come on. And now he wants to hide. But it's a consistent tier if you have this on, right? So if I'm shooting him, I should have adaptive munitions showing up. But nothing's there. Bungie, it'd be nice to know the timer for stuff, man. This is just dumb. But consistent to hit. So it doesn't matter if you, uh, you know, you're in a regular nightfall because this is a GM. And as you can see, I showed you the one hit, right? This was literally one hit. His shield went up, timed it, and boom, got the one hit off. All right. Now, one hits aren't going to be consistent. Two hits will be. All right. But for a scout, that means you can match any, uh, well, that was really weird there. You can match any burn. You can break down any shield. Um, adaptive munitions is not based on damage. Adaptive munitions is based on number of hits. And, of course, Arbalist is still good. But, you know, if you don't want to use Arbalist anymore, this would be something that you can look into. I just... I don't know, man. They, they failed on this. Anyways, leave your thoughts. Leave, leave uh, you know, what you think in the comments. Uh, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. I will be recording more this week. I was sick last week, but we'll get back to it. All right. See you on the next one. Deuces.